be watching your face and you'll be like, uh, I don't know that's not that check out. I just want to click through. And then we'll um, spend more time where you want to spend more time, okay? You just got to raise your hand. Oh, yeah. Figure out what you're doing with it. Stop me and let me know if I need to do anything, okay? Okay, no. Um, all right, so we're going to talk about time management for moms today and um, what our goals are, what we're expecting to get <laughs> from our days. More and less time, more free time, more fun time, um, less stress, better focus, and personal growth. Um, and here's the skills we're going to get. I can tell I wrote this when I was taking college classes, you know, because this is like <laughs> the beginning of a lecture, right? Um, so this is a me younger. I think I've aged a lot in the last few years. Um, I think there's the same. Yep, uh-huh. Uh, yeah. I've been married to the same guy for more than 30 years. I think 33 now. Um, we have a farm. I live on a gravel road with dust, you know, so. Uh, do I wash my vehicle before I come or after? So I know this church is on a gravel road. <laughs> and then I went back to school, um, became a nurse midwife. And yes, that lady back there, I can't remember your name. <laughs> Stephanie. I was precepting in Burlington, and I caught her last baby. <laughs> um, and I live in the Kelowna area, um, you know, rural, lots of little towns kind of a thing, and we live 10 miles from any town. And I wrote a book about how I was, um, the book came from a blog I wrote that I started in 2004. I started that in 2004. I was just writing about how I do what I do and why I do it. And at the time, I started, I think I had seven kids. Um, I think it shows here pretty soon. And it turned into a blog. I mean, it turned into a book. Um, here's me. There she is. That's number seven. Writing one-handed while nursing toddler. I could do both sides. I'm pretty good. And I, how did I do that? I woke up really early in the morning. She woke me up early in the morning, you know, and I would just be, my brain would be fresh and I'd be like, Okay, what did I learn from yesterday? What am I trying to figure out? And I would sit down and write. Um, so my reality was I was outnumbered. There we have eight. And I needed to learn coping skills. And so I did a lot of reading, a lot of asking uh, other moms, grandmas, older people at church, anybody who knew anything about any kind of topic I was into at that time, I was studying it. How can I do this better? Because I'm drowning. Um, so I started out pretty young. I had two under two, and then, you know, what's, what's next? Three under four, and, you know, so on and so forth. They all came two at a time. I mean, every two years. Not two at a time. No twins in my family. <laughs> there were a couple that are 18 months apart, and, and uh, one, um, two of my girls are almost three years apart. I had two miscarriages in there. And then our last one was a preemie. He was born at 26 weeks in 2007. Now he's 16. So at home right now I have um, Matthew who's 16 and Ellie who's 17. And they are pretty independent at this point in time. I don't have a lot to do with them except making sure did you do your schoolwork. The Ellie who's eight, 17, she is in her last year and she is um, pretty determined that she's going to finish all her schoolwork this fall. Her goal originally was last year, but then we have cattle and she got involved with, you know, calving season and getting up at night and all that. So she <laughs> there was some schoolwork that didn't happen right there that didn't reach her goals. 
So she's planning to finish this fall and then study for the, she's our girl who is very organized and motivated. So she's planning to study all winter for the ACT and take that in the spring. Even though she's not really planning to go to college, but she wants to get that ACT, she's, I don't know. They're all different, they are all different. So um, first up, mindset is huge in how we live our days. Know where you're going and set goals, of course. I'm sure you, you know, that's just part of life, right? Making goals and aiming and making the plan to go where that thing is that you want is. But sometimes we have to stop and identify what is the goal that I want. And I highly recommend doing that with your husband. And your kids as they get older, the older kids. Like I said, my girl who's really organized. And even the next one, uh, Matthew, who's 17 or 16. Yeah. <laughs> How old are they? <laughs> um, you know, today he's still working on driver's ed, which is a dumb thing. I don't know. I won't tell the story, but anyway, it's dumb. He doesn't have his driver's license yet. So he's working on driver's ed online. And so it's like, okay, two pages of math, driver's ed, because we're not really starting school until next week. And then you can go write K. So <laughs> that's, what, that's what happens. <laughs> All right, anybody relate here? I, this church is on a gravel road, so I know that there are people who can relate to that kind of farm schooling. <laughs> Um, okay, so back to mindset and goal setting. Um, set goals with your kids. You know, what, what are your goals? What do you want to study? Do you know what you want to do when you're graduated? And then make those plans. And that, you can start that when they're like 12, 13, 14. Back in those days, you can start that. I mean, of course, there's some stuff that is, are non-negotiable. but And be aware of mom guilt. So easy, so easy to do, to fall into. Um, don't shit on yourself. Because that is a killer. Um, anyway, there's some things that we need to constantly be working on ourselves about. And those are two biggies there. Mom guilt and shitty, which kind of go together. Okay. Um, we, I think, let me see what the next page is. Okay, strategize. Um, back to prioritize. This is important because we can be overcome by the tyranny of the urgent, you know? The things that, who's screaming the loudest of the children, you know? And then that person can really drive the day, which is unfortunate. Um, so we have to work on that part, which might be that child for a season. Um, and then, you know, the diapers, the feeding of people, the clean bathroom the laundry, you know, those things that are always there present, managing those so that they're not a tyrant over you. And learn how to work with those things and that those people that are crying out all the time for attention so that things are more peaceful in the home. And it's just really kind of stepping back and identifying what are the problems what are the problem areas, and what do I need to work on to make things more smooth? Um, and also identifying things in yourself that um, are helpful to you. So what what is an energizing task for you that makes you feel like, yes, the dishes are done, I am ready to go on to the next thing? Or is it, you know, some other thing? I mean, some people hate to do dishes, so that's kind of like their downer, you know? That's the one, that's when, when you have to, like, be strategic about Okay, I don't like doing the dishes, and you're done. I will wash 10 dishes, and then I will go on to something I really like to do, you know? Or I like to do better, anyway. <laughs> okay, so some of that is just, um, yeah, st being strategic and managing your day. Um, know when your high energy times are, and use that for the brain power, or physical labor, that's tough to do. And then the low energy times, don't try to slog through something. Save that for the high energy times. Slow and steady work, nothing that's time urgent. And you know, just know yourself, when, when do I have more energy and when do I have less energy? And then 
being strategic about what tasks you put into um, those parts of the day. And then also managing your home involves with children. Who is where in your home and what are they doing? And is this free time? Is it planned time? Is it chore time? And then um, deliberately placing people at certain places and times in your day that are free for all. Okay, so it's just being mindful of, of um, what you want them to accomplish. You know, like my son this morning, I, was, I said, you gotta do math and driver's ed before you go, right? Hey, you know, he's 16, he's like, yeah, yeah, mom, I know. He'd already made breakfast for himself. I mean, like, he made a Dutch puff, you know, like a big pain of them. Cool. Um, I don't know, those kids that, <laughs> those kids that are uh, motivated to do something, so part of um, managing yourself is also learning how to manage, help them be strategic about what their priorities are and, and teaching them skills so that they can go do these things. But, you know, managing, okay, so now you're in gone all day. When you come back, what are you planning to do? Um, but, you know, I'm talking about 16-year-old. The same thing applies to a six-year-old. You know, they have things they want to do, but, you know, play with Legos all day. Well, before you go play with Legos, in a specific place in the house, so their Legos aren't all over the place, <laughs> you need to do these five things, whatever. With, you know, their chores, their schoolwork, um, you know, taking care of their animals, you know, all those things that, that you want that child to do, make sure it's managed, that it's planned for them, and then help them to learn these skills so that they, when they're 16, they can already have breakfast made for themselves and everybody else who wants to eat the breakfast they made before they go do the thing they want to do. And I don't know why he wants to go write cake, but he does. <laughs> okay, routine tasks are not the same as a running to-do list. Okay, so those two things, um, I think a lot of times people will make a list of all the things they need to do, and it's just a mishmash of everything. It's, it's um, calling the dentist, it's washing the dishes, um, it's I need to um, order some things from Rainbow Resource. You know, it's like this big list of things that you can make to do that are just kind of random. Separate the routine tasks, things that you've done every single day. That is what goes into your home management binder. And then a running list of things to do, that is where you put the, I need to call the dentist, and I need to get a birthday card, you know, that kind of thing. Okay, I think I just definitely talked about. Okay, small shifts in how you do your days adds up to more hours. So being real strategic about the steps you take and the order of events that you put them in give you more time because you're more efficient with your steps and and your your um, activities. They're they're built to be strategic so that you can get more done. We'll talk about that here in a minute. Um, focus on one task at a time, makes you faster and efficient, and the result is more time and multiply time. It builds on itself. Um, I know it's hard to focus on one task when there's all the other activity that's going on in the home, but if you can work at focusing and then also teach your kids to focus and um, now I just wanted to go off on this nutrition tangent which I will not. <laughs> what goes into your body and what goes into your kids bodies really helps their brains work better and helps them to focus. So if you're if they're on um, a lot of a lot of um, carbs, sugar, um, sweet stuff, you know, all, all that stuff, it, it like overloads their brain and they can't work very well, okay? So if you're real careful about making sure they have protein and more protein and lots of water and not juice, um, it helps their brains work better so that they can focus more. So, um, yeah, I'll stop. <laughs> Nutrition is really big in my <laughs> world right now. Um, and it was back then too. Anyway, side issue. Minimize distractions. 
Um, okay. Yeah, be realistic. Everyone at the home has a routine, and that helps them focus on their tasks. Um, and if they know what they're doing, it eliminates their need for your input. You don't have to tell them. They just know what they're supposed to do. Time blocks, that's what we're going to talk about here. Um, and time block fun time, too. Outdoor play time, board games, art time. Make blocks in the day or the week for those things. Don't make it a free-for-all all, all the time, you know. Um, because that, it just makes for a mess. And, and if, it ha if it's something special, like on Tuesday and Thursday afternoon we play board games, then it's something that they have to look forward to also. Or art, if you know, they know. Like every Wednesday we do art, you know, then it's like, yay, can we do this, can we do that? And, you know, they have more fun with it. Um, procrastination. That is, um, anyone suffer from procrastination? Usually people want put off what they don't want to do because they build it up in their head. I do anyway, to be something big and horrible that it really isn't going to be big and horrible. But it's just, and then this dread grows and it just kind of becomes this monster where you're like, I do not want to do this thing because it'll take so much time and it will just, not fun and it's messy and when really you could have had it done by the time you did all that whining about it even if the whining is internal <laughs> um, okay take breaks um, because if you don't take breaks you're gonna burn out <laughs> you're just gonna crash so set a time limit for your work and the work that you have your kids do set a time limit for your break so Try 15 to 30 minutes. If you're doing, if you're working on a project, like a big clean, let's say you're gonna clean the school room. Seems to be messy all the time. You're gonna clean the school room. It looks like a big mess because you haven't done anything in there all summer long. And the kids use it for an art room. And and there's all kinds of random stuff in it. And, but you're gonna clean it because you're gonna start up the new school year and it looks like a big, okay. So just work on it, 15 minutes, 30 minutes at a time. Use a timer, stop, take a break for however long you want. And then go back to the big job. So build those breaks into your day, every day. Um, don't multitask, yeah. focus. Okay, this is huge. Balancing your obligations. Saying yes to one thing means saying no to something else. That's huge. And I think everybody suffers from that. I mean, we, the next new activity, you know, someone asks you to do something or something sounds like a great idea. And, yeah. And then what really happens is you don't have enough time for that. And so something else falls off. That Sometimes that's something that falls off is more important. So be careful. And keep your priorities in line too when you're choosing those obligations. Because sometimes our family, which is supposed to be like right at the top of the list, takes a backseat to things that we have unintentionally said yes to. Um, delegate. Identify the strengths and weaknesses of those in your home and assign tasks accordingly. <clears throat> and some. Some of those kids are big picture kids. They can they, they like can see things and know things. And some of them are really good at details. And some of them are really good at organizing. Some of them are um, in a hurry and they're kind of sloppy about their cleaning even though they know how to clean it well. They're just gonna do it as fast as they can. And so, you know, be careful about who you assign what work to because they, um, you want the work done right, and you want the work done well, and it makes for happier kids if they're doing things that they like to do and that you like to have done well. Not that they shouldn't know how to do all the things, but um, it's helpful for the daily routine to match the work, the chores, to the kid. 
Okay, so now I'm like nervous that I'm going to start this coughing attack again. <laughs> if you were here last spring, I had this big old coughing attack, and then I had to have a cookie and a sucker. <coughs> and now I'm nervous about it. Okay. Okay, so routines are the building blocks to satisfying days by allowing you to do more in less time. They help you build free time and fun time in your day. And it helps you give better focus to activities and add up, add it all up, up together, lowers your stress levels. So we're going to start <coughs> with morning and evening routines, which I handed out papers, or I printed them out, and Olivia and somebody else passed them out. Okay. Let me just look ahead here a little bit. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> so, when you're prepared, you're calm. That's just like a life rule. If you know what you're doing, you're calm about it because it's like muscle memory. Your brain knows what to do, and you can just flow with it. So, good morning starts the evening before. Write down what you want to happen in the morning. And then what in that list can be prepped ahead the day before, the evening before? And then plan the evening routine based on that morning routine. And then, <coughs> super important, plan for a rest time before you go to sleep. Do not, do not, do not stay up after kids and clean your house. Because <coughs> that's um, not good for you, not good for your brain, not good for your body. And plus, your kids should be helping clean um, and doing that stuff. Okay, so your evening routine, these are some ideas. And you can write them down on your list, but really you need to first like maybe flip that paper over and write down what I wrote here. Um, as far as ideas for an evening routine, oh, actually I handed out Okay, so you have a personal morning and evening routine and a kitchen evening and morning routine. So when you have your home management book made, then you, when you, you do your personal routine in your room or wherever, and then when you go to your kitchen, there's a kitchen routine that you do every single morning. And it's the same thing. And pretty soon you'll have it memorized and you'll just, you know, do it. Um, or you'll, yeah. So, and same thing for evening. The great thing about separating it is that, first of all, you can, it just helps you be faster because then when you step into your kitchen, there's this list of things you need, you know you need to do every single morning. And then, same thing in the evening. There's this list of things you know, know you need to do in your kitchen um, before you go up to your room and have your personal evening routine. So those things help help organize your day. They're like pillars in your day so that you aren't staying up after the kids go to bed to do all the things that you think you didn't get done during the day that you want to do. Um, or just you know, live in a mess and be miserable. But that's not very fun. So here's some ideas for an evening routine. Tell me um, when you're ready to, if you're writing, tell me when you're ready to let me know, and then we'll move on, move to the next slide, which is the morning routine. Are you all ready? Okay, so morning routine. Ready. Okay, morning routine. Um, here's some ideas for a morning routine. And this, I think on these slides, or I have both, like your morning routine for like your kitchen and personal. So personal, just think of all the things I want to do before I start the day. Um, read the Bible, wash my face, put on deodorant, put on, um, sorry. Um, Okay, so yeah, so those, those things that you want to have in your routine every day. So let's say you wanted to start an exercise routine. You wanted to wake up and do 15-minute stretches of, you know, from this 
program that you saw on Instagram looks like great thing to do and it's going to make you stronger. Well, that's where you put it in your personal morning routine. And then um, build what do you need to do before that. What do you need to do after that. And then, um, this is all, I know some of you have babies, so that's going to play into that. But think of that in mind, with that in mind. How is my baby going to fit into my personal morning routine before I show up at the kitchen? Okay, and then, or your children, you know, your little children, what are they going to do? Are you doing this before they get up? What time do they usually get up? If they get up, what are you going to do? So think about those things as you're creating your personal morning routine. And then um, you go down to your kitchen. I, I say down because I have two stores. Um, and then what are you going to do when, you're, when you show up in your kitchen? You know, everyone's different. Everybody has different house, different ages of kids different ideas of what to have for breakfast, um, you know, just different lifestyle factors. So, you know, it has to be really personal to you what you want to do in your morning routine. These are just ideas that I did over the years or currently. Oh, and then next up, you can create the same idea for your children. What do you want your children to do when they first wake up? You know, we had this um, actually, my mom and dad had this when when I was a kid. It was washy, brushy, potty. You know, as soon as you wake up, washy, brushy, potty. <laughs> and then we get to down and have breakfast. You know, um, so I mean that kind of thing. What do you want your children to do when they first wake up, and then they come to breakfast, and then are they going to straighten their bedroom and their bathroom, which is a great idea for them to do, and you know, real simple. Assign real simple chores for them to do. When you go first go to the bathroom in the morning, what is one thing that you're going to do to clean this space? You know, you're not just going to walk in and, you know, in and out. You know, no. Nope. What's one thing you can do? Because every time you go in the bathroom, you should do one thing to clean it. You know, all of us. It's just a really good habit to get into for life. Um, okay. All right. So then, in your home management book. Um, after you've personalized it, after you've written it down, stick it in the page protector, and then you can check off steps using a dry erase marker if you want to. Now I brought, let's see, I'm not wearing it, so I brought, I brought my current one. Actually, this is not current. I made this one a year ago, and in here you'll see page protectors. Okay, this is my page. All right, so here's my personal. Morning and evening routine, or the one I made a year ago. Oh, and then write down beside each thing how much time it's going to take. You know, because sometimes we think, I can't do that. It's going to take forever. You know, I can't add in that thing, whatever that thing is. Well, when you really use a timer and say, oh, how long does it take? Oh, see, I thought, oh, it takes five minutes to straighten my bedroom. Really? It really doesn't even take five minutes. Yeah. <laughs> But if you have kids playing in your bedroom, yeah, it might take five minutes. Or if they, you know, drag stuff into your room. Um, yeah, so this kind of thing. Do this. Keep track. And then here's my kitchen morning and evening routine, or it was a year ago. You know, this is one of those things that you need to update because life changes. And, um, you know, things don't work out. You think, oh, that exercise plan, that was a great idea, you know. Well, then you find out. I hate walking on the treadmill. I can't walk on the treadmill. It's so boring. I just can't do it. You know, so then you get the exercise bike instead, you know, or vice versa. Or you can go walk outside because it's summer and it's beautiful. But you don't want to walk down the dusty roads because then you're dirty. And then, you know, you can create all kinds of things in your head. And sometimes they're real problems and sometimes they really aren't. <laughs> okay, so then that's morning to evening routines. Mealtime routines are pillars for the rest of the day. Okay, so this is what's going to think about. What is the messiest room in your house? The kitchen. Because people are eating all the time, right? And you have to make breakfast, and you have to make lunch, and supper, and snacks, and you have to do it day after day after day after day after day. And if nobody cleans it up, well, then the kitchen counters are full of dishes, the sink's full of dishes, the dishwashers have um, clean dishes in them because nobody unloaded, and, and there's a mess on the stove from 
who knows how long since the last time the stove got clean. You know, I mean, it can add up really fast. I mean, even if you think, <laughs> my kitchen's clean and it's beautiful. Three days later, it can look like terrible. Nobody does their chores, right? Um, why am I holding this? Mealtime routines, that's what you put on those pages, okay? Is, is the mealtime routine for your kids, but then also post it in your kitchen. Like, put it on the wall, put it on the refrigerator, put it somewhere in your house, close to the kitchen, so that everybody knows what they're supposed to be doing, when. Um, okay, and then use a timer so that people know, oh, it doesn't take a huge amount of time to unload the dishwasher. It really doesn't. <laughs> you can do it fast. Um, okay, so we always said to, I mean, at my house, if everybody pitched in, we could get the, the meal cleaned up in 10 minutes or less. And then somebody told me one time, just some, this is someone who said, oh, it takes me more than 10 minutes to unload the dishwasher. So really? More than 10 minutes? And it just kind of, but then in talking to her, it sounded like when they had moved into the house, the dishes, the kitchen stuff was just literally put in cupboards willy-nilly with no organization or strategy. And so then unloading the dishwasher probably did take more than 10 minutes because things were not efficiently placed, okay? So um, there's a book I read a long time ago about kitchen organization, and I kind of think it's out of print, but the author was actually from Cedar Rapids, Iowa. Denise Schofield was the author. And I'm pretty sure the book literally was Kitchen Organization, something like that. But anyway, one of the, and it's an old book, like written in the 80s maybe. Um, one of the things that she said to do in Kitchen Organization was to, I think it was her, was to put things um, like with like, of course, you know, put all your knives together in one place, put all your plates in one place and your bowls in one place and here's okay so then put it beside your dishwasher and put it in low cupboard so your children can unload it and load it you know or unload it or and then set the table you know because it's all kid height they're not climbing on counters to get the dishes or the glasses or something it's all down low and right beside where the dishwasher is so you unload the dishwasher open the cupboard and just you know, plates go in fast. And the silverware drawer is right there. And the silverware goes in really fast. And the glasses, or the, you know, whatever, wherever you keep your glasses. You know, just, it's fast. If it's right there beside each other. So organizing your kitchen so, um, with that kind of strategy in mind, makes things faster. Um, and then the other thing, that I learned from that book was um, kitchen centers. So where do you cut up your veggies? Um, all of your cutting boards and knives in one area right next to the stove where you're going to put it into the pan. Or if you're making a salad with your salad spinner, you know, in the cupboard right there. So you're cutting, your cutting board, your salad spinner, your stove, you know, it's all close so that you're not running around getting different things from different places. Um, maybe make smoothies every single morning. You have a place in your kitchen where all the smoothie ingredients are and your blender and, you know, just be strategic about creating those places in your kitchen and your whole house, but especially the kitchen, it really, I think, pays off in the same time. And, okay, so what were we on? Mealtime routines. Oh, and I started in the kitchen. Sorry about that. Um, okay, so pre-meal table tasks that kids can do. Unload the dishwasher, set the table. These are all things that preschoolers can do. Fill the water glasses. And then, if you have a lot of kitchen, especially, or a lot of kids, a lot of children, assign a kitchen helper for each day of the week. Okay, so I'm going to open my book again. Okay, so I do not, because I only have two high schoolers at home right now. That's all. That's all the random people that show up at my house for supper every night. Those adult children never really leave. They just show up for food. 
Okay, so, oh, you'll see it. You have the, you have the sheets. You have a two-page spread. On one of these lines here, put the child of the day, the kitchen helper for each day. So, um, I know some of you have a lot of children. If you, I think we started this when we had like five or six, assigning each kid a day, maybe it was before that. So assigning a day of the week to a child, and then they get to do special things on that day, like help mom in the kitchen, sit by mom when she reads stories, I'm thinking back, uh, go get the mail. Um, uh, if mom or dad goes to town for an errand, then they get to ride along with that. If they're, you know, if it really makes sense that only one person should go. Um, so anything like that, that kid gets Monday. So the day of the week. So our, we started with the oldest. Brant was Monday. Tuesday was was Brock. Wednesday was Bridget. Thursday was Annie. Friday was Brooke, Saturday was Brian, and we didn't do it on Sunday. And then Monday we started again, and that would have been Bronwyn. Bronwyn was Monday, but by that time, by the time Bronwyn really cared about having a special day, Brian or Brant, who had Monday, was like, I don't know, 18. He didn't care. <laughs> you know? It just, so assigning the day of the week, um, First of all, that kid learns skills with you, like in the kitchen or with whoever they get to do the special thing with. And then also, um, it gives them gives quality time with that kid. And also, what was that thing popped in my head that they got to do? Because I thought of something. Um, well, anyway, just anything that your kids fight about or that they um, care about, some of uh, food. So they want, maybe one of them, um, they want to make chocolate chip cookies. They can make chocolate chip cookies on their special day. They just don't need to go to the kitchen and make cookies. Although, my older kids grew up in a different house than my younger kids did, I'll tell you that. <laughs> because when the, all the older kids are gone, and there's only younger kids at home, then they know all this stuff because they learned it growing up. My younger children never grew up in a house where there weren't teenagers. And so they grew up in a completely different house. And then when they got older and the kids were, the older kids were gone, well then they kind of had all these skills and knowledge and were very motivated and organized. And I didn't have to teach them anything because they just learned it growing up from the older kids. And then, I don't know, it's just a different dynamic going on the last few years. How did I get there? I'll try not to wander anymore. <laughs> okay, post meal tasks. Um, elementary kids can do this too. Um, preschool kids can do some of it. Um, let's see. Let's see what preschool kids can help wash and dry dishes. Preschool kids can sweep under the table. They can wipe the table, chairs, high school, or high chairs, counters. Um, the older kids can put the food away. Um, the little kids can collect the trash, put the cloth napkins in the laundry, load the dishwasher. Okay, so a lot of these things, um, all these things elementary kids can do, just divide it up and um, be careful about not um, burdening one person with too much, like yourself. <laughs> Mom does not need to do all this stuff when Kids can, kids can do it. They can learn how to do it. Their life skills, they're going to have to know how to do it when they're grown up. Okay, messy on the outside, messy on the inside. Is that true? <laughs> like, think, when your house is a mess, what does that do? What, how do you feel? And what does that do in you? It just kind of, when it gets kind of icky and feel overwhelmed, and then you feel like quitting and everything, but you don't know what to quit first, and... <laughs> and you just want to go back to that. Or hire someone to clean, which is perfectly fine to do. I'm all about Delby. Um, you know, there's times in life, 
especially when you have lots of little children and no big kids to help, that maybe some outside help is very valid for your mental sanity. Um, okay, afternoon quiet time. Everybody in the house, even the older kids, the house is quiet for an hour. Everybody's alone, and it makes sense to be alone, and if older kids are not alone, they better be quiet, and not near the little kids who are taking naps. And moms, take your rest seriously, and use that time to close your eyes, or read a book or something, stay off the internet, because you're going to need to just rest. And as soon as you open your phone, you know, a million things. And there's a lot of shoulds in the phone, you know? You just, all the, even Instagram, oh, my house should look like that house. Or I should homeschool like her. Or oh, we were going to do a thousand hours outside, and we didn't last year. Maybe I should do that this year. I mean, just so just stay off the phone during your rest time and use it for like decompressing or just sit out on your porch and look at the horizon. That's a good thing to do. Um, okay, read aloud time. Super important for kids, and read above their age level. You guys, you're homeschoolers, you know all this. Choose quality books and have them narrate back, tell the story back. And um, I'm going to say this because this is a safe place. You're all homeschoolers, right? Everybody's homeschoolers. <laughs> I teach Sunday school at my church, fifth and sixth graders. And it's pretty well divided. Oh, and I did Bible school. Same thing. Half the kids are homeschooled, half the kids are public school. The homeschool kids can read really well really, really well, and um, part of it, I think, in looking at the families, is that they're, they're not just narrating back um, and reading a lot in the day. Um, they're reading to their younger siblings, and it shows up in the way they read, because when, when we're going around reading the Bible verses, they're reading with expression, <coughs> where the, um, most of the other kids are kind of still struggling with reading in their fifth and sixth grade. This is sad. I don't make them read. They can skip if they want. I know if they want to read, so they do. Okay. And they improve. But it was just really noticeable to me as a teacher that I knew okay, those are the homeschool kids that are reading really well here. So good job, homeschool moms. Well done. Okay, afternoon chore time. This is a super important part of your day. And put the same chore list on every single day and post it in your kitchen, wherever, multiple places. Who's doing what? Have it at the same time every day. It doesn't have to be an afternoon. We just chose 4 o'clock. I don't know. I think because it just fit kind of like at the end of the day. I don't know. It worked for us. 4 o'clock in the afternoon. Afternoon chore time. And then we would have a little treat afterwards. You know, have a some snacks. Um, these things really help putting on calming music, lighting a candle, um, and then everybody knowing what they're supposed to do, going to the room, doing it, and honestly it would take 10 minutes depending on, and be careful about who you assign to what room, the really messy room, assign your, assign your really good team to the messy room. Um, if it's the children, little children that made the mess, then they should be in there picking up the mess too, you know, to get it out, put it away, that kind of thing. Teach them that. And um, some of the rooms in the house don't need a lot of cleaning, so maybe just one person does like one or two rooms or an area that's just not, like our front room never really got messy because they didn't play with toys there. So we didn't really get used unless we were doing our read aloud time. We did our read aloud time in that room. And that's really all we used it for, and they did piano in that room, you know? So be, everyone's life and house is different, so just be um, mindful of that when you're um, assigning who's cleaning what area of the house. And then make sure you clean it up every day at the same time. It's a pillar of your day. Super important. Can't say it enough. <laughs> make sure life's much more sane. Um, okay, I said that. Oh, okay, this. Um, make a, a list of what should be done in each room. So, like your 
your family room. Okay? What are the chores that you want done daily in this room? Write it all out. Take a picture of the room when it's all clean and beautiful looking. Print it out. Put it on that paper. And then laminate it or put it in a page protector. And then keep it in that room. Put it in a cupboard or a drawer or a, a, you know, someplace that's kind of out of sight. But it's there and you and the kids know that it's there. So when they go to that room, what am I supposed to do? Right here. You can even make a little picture. I mean, if they're not readers yet, you can make pictures of, of, of things like the feather duster. So if they're supposed to dust the room with a feather duster, well, then there's a picture of a feather duster. And they know, okay, I'm supposed to run the feather duster. And there's a picture of books. That means I'm supposed to look around and see if there's any books on the floor and on the furniture. And I'm supposed to put the books on the bookshelf, you know? So um, make a list, and then, they, then you don't really have to argue with them. There it is. It's on the paper. You're not the bad guy anymore. The paper is with the list. <laughs> and then there, here's the picture of what the room's supposed to look like. So then they can, you know, if they say, I'm done, and then you can look at the picture. Does it look like the picture? Yes or no? Well, yes, it does. Good job. All right, so that kind of thing is really helpful. And then, of course, always tell them thank you and give them lots of encouragement because then we all like to be thanked and encouraged, so make sure that you're doing that with your kids. All right, okay, so your personalized home management book, this big old thing that I have here, this is like another brain, and this is, this is extra big, um, but I will, I will just give a little preview of it. All right, personal morning and evening routine, kitchen morning and evening routine. Here's Sunday, which apparently I didn't fill out last year when I made my updated one last year. Um, I think there was a reason for that. I think we didn't. There was some information I was waiting for, and we didn't get it. Okay, so anyway. Why is it? Okay, it's the reverse. Should be a.m. on one side, p.m. on the other. All right. Here's the thing. This My book is set up so that it's a.m. and p.m. on a two-page spread, Okay. When you're busy with like a whole lot of children and you're homeschooling all of them, you might have so many things that you're trying to fit on one page that you really need a two-page spread for a.m. and a two-page spread for p.m. Okay, so this that would be like, here's our day until noon. And then here's our day until we all go to bed. Okay. That's just an idea. If you, if you need, you might need two pages if you're homeschooling, depending on how much stuff you want to put on your pages, okay? But then each of these, each of these places is for like a routine that you want to. I I put times on these on mine. I just wrote it in eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve here. But if you, like I just said, if you have a really busy house with a lot of kids, it might be 8, 8.30, 9, 9.30, 10, you know, you might break it up further. It's all up to you and your personal lifestyle. Okay, so here's Tuesday, Wednesday. Um, okay, did we talk about that yet? I don't think we're going to. Okay, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, blah, blah, blah. Okay, over here on this, the rest of the book, you know, what are all those other tabs? This next one is room tours. So who's doing what when? Oh, no, no. I would assign that to my kids, but since I only have a 16 and a 17-year-old home right now, it's, it's, um, we're all doing it together. It is kind of divided still, but not like it was way back when. Okay, so you, the, um, this is the sunroom, all the things that need done in the sunroom, daily, weekly, and the deep cleaning tasks. So then, and here's one for the kitchen. The daily task, weekly task, deep cleaning. So for each area of the house, I have um, the focus area. But it does. there's not room for a picture on it. But you can certainly slap pictures on it. Do what you want with it, OK? And then here is the deep cleaning schedule. What specifically needs done in each room and when I'm going to do it. OK, so here's week one is the first day of the month through Saturday. So like today's September 1, right? So September 1 through Saturday, 
what we should be de cleaning at my house are the entryways, the stairways, and the mudroom. And then next week, the first full week of the month, kitchen and, and the west room. And then week three of the month, um, week three is the second full week of the month, bathrooms, laundry room, basement. Week four, the third full week of the month, bedrooms, bedroom closets, and linen closets. I should do that. My linen closet needs cleaned out. Week five, last Monday through the last days of the month, the living room, center room, and home office. Okay, so you see how how to organize a deep cleaning so you're not feeling like, oh, it never gets cleaned, or I, I will do that in April. Well, you can keep it all clean all the time with just a little bit of work every month. That's the whole idea. Okay, and then here's, here's my how to clean the bedroom and bathroom super fast plan. <laughs> Sometimes you need to trick your own brain and have, have fun, you know? Timer helps. Here's a decluttering plan. That helps um, with like just organizing it. Like this is, like I said, this is a brain outside of your body. So like when you're like, I need to declutter my pantry and I don't know where to start. Oh look, I made a plan for that one time. And then I can just go through it step by step. I don't have to think about it. It's already here. I did it one time. You know, made the plan. Um, okay, then here's a kitchen day cleaning plan. All right, so let's move ahead because I think I talked about that here. <laughs> okay, paper, pencil, paper factor, sticky notes, quiet place, write your personalized routines. Okay, oh, and then here, here I tried to make a grid of this last year. And that's where I thought, okay. Okay, all right, so this is what I want you to pay attention to. All right. Okay, so see that second, under Sunday, it says the Lord's Day. Under Monday, it says laundry day. Under Tuesday, it says office day. Wednesday, kitchen day. Thursday, oh yeah, I never fixed this. This is the last time I was here. Two office days on there. One of them um, should be town day. Town day is missing. Friday is cleaning day, Saturday is gardening day. Okay, so by organizing big parts of our life, two days of the week, um, we get freedom and we reduce stress because we are not constantly burdened with, oh, the laundry, the laundry, the laundry. No, yeah, we have to do laundry every day, but on laundry, Laundry day, I'm going to clean my laundry room, and I'm going to get caught up in all the laundry, and it's going to all get folded and put away, and all the other days of the week, you know, I'm not going to stress about laundry because Monday is laundry day. And same with the other days. Kitchen day, that can be the day that you do your baking, that you do your freezer cooking, that you make the beef broth, that you um, clean the kitchen cupboards and the pantry. Um, mop the floor on kitchen day. So it relieves stress the rest of the week by not thinking, look at all the laundry I need to do, and oh, the kitchen, I should mop the floor, and, and, uh, and I need to pay the bills, um, and oh my goodness, the bathrooms are filthy, I need to clean, and I need to go weed the garden. I mean, instead of all that stuff all the time in our head, <coughs> you can mentally Put, it, put, those, put that burden off to Monday. I'm going to do the laundry. Tuesday, I'm going to pay the bills. Wednesday, I'm going to clean out the pantry. Thursday, I'm going to town to get groceries because that's Thursday. Whatever day your town day is. I should say town day. Friday is when you're going to add cleaning tasks on top of afternoon chore time so that we get the house really clean. Really and then Saturday, I will go full weeds. Okay. We can talk about gardening day a little bit too, because <laughs> as we know in Iowa, the weeds go crazy in July. <laughs> and gardening day sometimes is all the days this time of year, right? If you have a garden and you're trying to preserve food. So just think of it this way. Gardening day is a day to focus on we're going to clean the garage. We're going to um, straighten up around the house. 
or the outside of the house. We're going to make sure all the toys are picked up and, and the grass is mowed and the weeds and blah, blah, blah. But when we're, if you're a gardener, um, there's, of course, going to be gardening going on every day, they, all the other days that it doesn't rain. Um, okay, we'll move on because I'm sure you probably have questions about that, but hopefully we'll answer them. Laundry day, I said that, today to catch up, use a timer, assign helpers. Oh, how to do it in your homeschool day, is that your big question? How do I catch up on all the laundry and homeschool? Um, this is how we did it. First of all, on laundry day, start it as soon as you wake up. So it goes in your home management book on Monday. Monday. When I go down to the kitchen on Monday, first thing I do is start laundry. Start a load. And then we have breakfast. And then I change loads. And then we, um, everybody does their animal chores, whatever, outside chores, have a chore time. And as soon as that's over, we ch I change loads again. And then we do another part of the schoolwork day, you know, like, we always did Bible, math first, Bible, math, language, arts. And then there was like maybe a break, change the loads then, change the laundry loads. And then um, another homeschool part of the day, and then change loads again. And then, so we have a lot of loads. And then at noon, same thing. Make sure there's a load going in before lunch, and after lunch, change loads. And then in that, on afternoon chore time, part of that is holding laundry. So then by that time, we have lots of laundry to fold, right? So then we listen to an audio book and fold laundry for a long time. <laughs> <coughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> okay. Um, and those kids, those kids, <laughs> those kids can change the laundry. Laundry loads, and those kids can help sort the laundry, and those kids can help organize the laundry, and those kids can help take the laundry to where they're supposed to be, and um, give them appropriately sized baskets. Um, we use washed, like the dishwashing tubs for the little children. We give them a basket. Family closets really helpful. We did that for a while with our boys. They lived in the basement, and um, they had a, they had all their clothes in the in our laundry room, which was in the basement at that time. They kept their, all, all their laundry there. There was a hang-up section, and then there was tubs where they had their different things. Um, the little children's, their church clothes go in my closet, did, because little girls like to, like bad girls, have um, change their clothes a lot, and put on their sunny clothes when they're not supposed to put on their sunny clothes, lose their sunny shoes, lose all that stuff. So, and the other nice thing about having laundry day on Monday is those, those boys, those boys, who played outside in the grass after church and got grass games, you know, well then we get to treat it, you know, right away on Monday. And then on Monday, all, the, all those church clothes are clean, you go back in the closet, and my closet, and then they're all ready for next week when we get ready for church. I learned all that the hard way, let me tell you. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Kitchen day. Um, I talked about that. You can clean your whole kitchen, one cupboard, one drawer at a time. It doesn't take much time to clean out one cupboard and wipe it down for one drawer. Um, seriously, uh, if you do the whole thing at once, it'll take like a half day or a whole day even. But if you do just one each Wednesday on your kitchen day, it's always clean. And then refrigerator, same thing. If you keep the refrigerator, cleaned out and wiped out every kitchen day. You don't have to do the whole thing. I mean, you can just do like top two shelves, pull everything out, wipe them down, put everything back, you know, and then let it go till next kitchen day and then do the next, maybe it's just the vegetable drawers you're gonna do the next week. And then the next week you're gonna, you know, some, some other part, the door, the door, all the things in the door. And kids are really good at that too, so. And they see, I don't know, they kind of get excited about, Mom, we have salad dressing from you know, three years ago. <laughs> throw it up, throw it up, it's all right. <coughs> Office day, dedicate that day to bill paying 
um, put everything on auto pay and paperless if you can. Um, online shopping. The, the good thing about that is it, it reduces those impulse buys. If you say, I'm not going to buy this. I'm going to wait till Thursday or whatever. <laughs> then by Thursday you realize, I do I really need that? Why, yes, I do. <laughs> or maybe not. Um, yeah, and then, I mean, for some people this might be like 10 minutes, half an hour. If you have any kind of home business, you might want to dedicate your office day to you know, three hours or half a day and you get a babysitter or, you know, that kind of thing. Home office day, that is um, going to be real specific to who you are and your family and your lifestyle and all of that. Town day, okay, uh, you all live out here and on a gravel road, right? <laughs> you probably don't all live on this gravel road. <laughs> but in rural Iowa, uh, we have to be strategic about shopping. And so going to town, doing all the activities on one day is way more logical to someone who lives in suburbia. We lived in suburban St. Louis for two years a while back. Boy, that was so convenient. It was like, which grocery store should I go to? There's like five within half a mile of me. Or which Goodwill should I go to? There's like, yeah. Or which Target? You know, I mean, which, it was, we could walk to Mexican. It was so convenient, but it was really inefficient. Even if you live in town, I think you should have a town date because it's so inefficient to just run, 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 run out to the, get this and get that. You know, really. Even though it's just down the street, it's still, you're still like going out. And then when you go to get that one thing, you don't just get that one thing. There's all these other things that hop in the cart, you know? So be strategic. Save you money and time and gas. And time. Time is like a big commodity. Um, cleaning day. Okay, so how do you do How do you get the whole house clean? The afternoon chore time is just for straightening up the house, um, dusting and vacuuming the dirtiest room that you live in, the kitchen and maybe your school room and maybe the, your family room. The rest of the house gets maybe, you know, a little bit of cleaning. Um, but then on cleaning day, that's when you go a little bit deeper. You vacuum all the floors, you dust everything, um, make sure you spend some time decluttering and um, clean the windows if they need cleaned, or the ceiling fans, the lights. Um, that, it's just extra that you spend on each time. So then, remember I told you about how to make a cleaning list for each room? So there's daily cleaning for each room, and there's weekly cleaning. That's when you do the weekly cleaning is on cleaning day. And then there's a deep cleaning that you do once a month or whenever it rolls around to do the deep cleaning for that area of the house. Okay, gardening day, I think I talked about that. That's your garden, your sidewalks, your vehicle, the garage, flower beds, porches, deck, patio. And then the Lord's Day, plan ahead. Laundry Day Church Club, we talked about that. Saturday, plan and prep food for breakfast and Sunday dinner. Okay, so it's just helpful. It just is really helpful to do that ahead of time so that Sundays you can really rest. It just is really satisfying to have all that done and out of the way. Um, and then lay out your clothes and shoes Saturday night. And then Sunday morning, don't sleep in. I don't know. It took me a long time to realize that. You can't sleep in on Sunday. It just doesn't. You can't. No. You're, no, you just can't. It doesn't work. Um, okay, and then project day. Okay, so for those projects, like you want to paint the bathroom, plan ahead. Okay, here's it. That's this kind of thing. I wonder if I have one in here. Okay, so make a plan for a project day, and you make a two page spread for it. So, let's see. I'm pretty sure I have it. Oh, I have a Sunday food day. <laughs> okay, so this is smart too. So, simple Sunday dinner and simple Sunday snack food. And these will become family favorites. If you know that they know every Sunday we're going to have spinach artichoke dip. Yeah, they love that. You know, Southwestern dip, we're going to have chips and crackers and or we're going to have shredded cheese. This is, this is an older one. Um, 
but anyway, they, the kids will get used to that on Sunday, we get to do this. And these are the simple, fun foods that we make on Sunday. And you just open it up, pretty soon your kids will be making it for you. Um, and your dinner's plan, just open it up and do it. Um, but anyway, what was I looking for? Project day. I don't see it in here. But anyway, there's a, you can make a two-page spread for a project day so that when you want to paint the bathroom, there's like an area where you're like, okay, so here's where all the paint supplies are. Here's the colors that I have. Um, here's where the, here's who, here's who I can, here are my resources for babysitting. Here's a simple supper plan. You know, maybe it's a crock pot, crock pot dish that you only do on project day. And so that's something the kids look forward to. Oh, we only get to eat, I don't know, make it up, some sort of thing on project day. And what, so it's, it's making a plan ahead of time so that you can just, it just releases a lot of stress to have a plan for what you're going to do with the kids, um, where your supplies are, when do you need to get the supplies? Because sometimes you need to like plan ahead. I need to go to Menards and then I need to um, just, you know, get this and I need to get that and I need to stop and get the ingredients for our special supper and and um, I need to talk to my sister about babysitting on that day and you know just have this whole plan and then you set a date on the calendar to do that back and clean or paint. Do you see what I'm saying? Rather than putting something off forever, plan ahead and then not just put it on the counter, but also make the plan for all the steps that you need to do for that project. <coughs> okay, so there it all is. Now, all right, here's our family quote. I used to, I even said this in my Bible school kids. We are a family, or was it my Sunday school kids? Anyway, I have, I, have a, I have a sparkler in my Bible school and my Sunday school class. <laughs> and this just came out of my mouth one time when he was being naughty. We are a family, we love each other, we take care of each other, and we help each other. You know, sometimes it comes out real sweet, and sometimes it comes out like, you better shake up. We're a family. <laughs> we love each other, we take care of each other, we help each other. Okay. So when that becomes a motto, it just becomes internalized, and then the children, um, they just do it, and they become, they become, they are, they grow up as friends and, and loving each other and helping each other, and they still do. It's really fun to see the adult kids doing that with each other. It's awesome. Um, okay, any questions? Anything you want me to go back over on these slides? Anything I said I was going to talk about and I didn't, or I glossed over, or uh, <laughs> which did you pass? Yes. Yeah. But I do. I guess tell me where you're <coughs> So that that's a great starting place um, because they they need to know all the chores. They need to have do everything. They need to know how to wash dishes. They need to have laundry, um, cleaning, clean the toilet, all those things. They need to know how to do all that. Um, so rotate the chores but not too frequently. Like I like to leave them in the same chore for six months so they get really good at it. Not daily, not weekly, monthly. Plus that's stressful for you because you like, I can't remember who's supposed to clean the bathroom. Who's supposed to clean the bathroom? And then they'll start pointing fingers. Well, I thought it was her. No, you, it, you switched it, mom. It's his turn now, you know, that kind of thing. So I like to keep them dead in, in, a, in a chore for six months. At the same time, there are seasons when um, you know things are going to get real good. You're going to have a baby. And you know that for the next year, it's going to be more challenging. And, or maybe you're pregnant. Or maybe you have a hard pregnancy. Maybe you just know that 
pregnancy is kind of hard on my body. I need to know, just kind of take it easy for the next six months or whatever. And then we're going to have the baby. And the, you know, so there's those times in life where things get a little hectic, and you want the best person in the role. So then you reflect and think, okay, who, who is really good at this job and who's really good at that job? Because skills will emerge, you know, and, and you'll know which kid really cares that the bathroom's clean and which kid gives it a lick and a promise and hopes mom doesn't notice, you know. <laughs> but they're really good at, like, cooking and they love to cook and they, they like to make lunch for everybody. It's like their superpower, you know. So, I mean, different skills emerge. And so when you're in those hard times, you can um, be strategic about who to put in what chores. I should have clarified that earlier, sorry. Anything else? I'll let so this is the question that I had this is the last time. How do you fit in like friends and going to other people's houses and like, where do you not fit in? Yes. <laughs> Which is super important. I didn't I don't think I talked much about self care here because honestly, a lot of this is self care because like I said, messy on the outside is messy on the inside. So getting organized and getting your days organized and getting your house organized is self-care, but also friends and family and, and um, those kind of things. These kind of events are super important. So um, picking a day in the month, um, a friend and I did, we, this is years ago, actually I did this, I had like three or four different times in life where I would have a friend that we would switch days with babysitting, where we would, um, I would watch all her kids for a, one day a month, and then the next month she watched all my kids for one day. And we would take that day to do all kinds of random stuff, you know, that you think, saving this thing, this shopping, or this project, or something, for that day when Becky's going to watch my kids. Okay, so that's one way. Another thing that, um, and it was the same day every month. Like, it was like, I don't know, I can't remember what it was, but let's say the first Thursday of, of every month. And it was a day that the kids looked forward to, too. Then. So then you kind of rearrange your week, too, um, or your month to allow for that. You're not going to do town day on that day. So where else are you going to slip town day in? It's definitely going to be a shorter town day, you know, for that week or, you know, um, that kind of thing. And then uh, same thing for um, these kind of things. If you, I don't know how often you meet every month. And what is today? Friday. <laughs> First Friday of every month. You come here in the afternoon, you know, you kind of build build your life and your weeks so that you can do that and switch those days. So Friday's typically your cleaning day. Well, you're probably not going to go clean your house today. So maybe you switched it with your typical office day because your office day is short. You, you can slip that in anywhere. You can do it evening or you can do it both on the same day, office day and cleaning day just because of, or maybe, you know, you're just switching days, um, and then if you're doing a lot of hospitality in the evening, same thing. Just I would recommend keeping it to like one day of the week, like every Wednesday evening we have um, family over or friends over. That's actually that, that's that's how we we have um, um, tea parties every Wednesday afternoon. My sister and I, and with our kids, although it's not really working out anymore. Her kids are younger. And my kids are older, but now my kids are really leaving. But we would have a tea party, and we'd talk about civics. It was like we'd have this civics and current events conversation going, and we'd have this tea party. And we've done tea parties for years and years, but we added school to it. And then um, in the evening, and then my mom comes too, to the tea party. And then in the evening, we have a soup supper. So that everybody shows up for soup supper. I mean, like, all my kids and grandparents and her family, her whole family, you know, I mean, so it's like this, and it's every Wednesday. So if I know it's going to happen every Wednesday afternoon and evening, you know, I can plan and strategize the rest of the week around that. So I would recommend having it on a consistent basis if you're going to do um, hospitality events or if you're going to have people over like every Friday night 
We're going to have a new family, or a new, new person, new family from our church, not a new family, but another family from our church over on Friday nights, just to get to know everybody in the congregation. Friday night, because I know people have done that. We, and we've gone to people's houses who have done that. You know, this year we decided we're going to have people from the church over every Friday night. And they just rotate through the church and have them over every Friday night. That's what they committed to do, you know? So, yeah, I think I'd just be real strategic about it. But then also, we have to be flexible in life, you know? And this kind of plan, having this already um, <clears throat> in your life, running relatively smoothly, you know? There's always the kid interruptions. But relatively smoothly with a plan of on Mondays, you do this, Tuesdays, Wednesdays, Thursdays, and you have that free mental space. It also allows freedom in your day and your mind to be flexible and say, oh yeah, come over for supper. You know, I have a plan. Um, you know, bring a salad if you want and just spontaneously have people over because you're prepared. You know, you have, your house is relatively clean. You're not going to be like, you know, whole shame or worried. And those people don't care anyway. And, um, <clears throat> and you have a supper plan because on kitchen day, um, you, you food prepped. And on town day, you've gotten the groceries. On office day, you planned your menu, you know. So it's kind of a rotating. Oh, that's the other thing that's in my book. In my personal home management book, there's a lot of this where I like, let me put my glass for you. Um, it's hot here. Okay, so I have a two-page spread here for hospitality plan template, you know. So that... Who, when, menu ideas, conversation topic ideas, children's activities, games that you might play, and then a menu. So here's a, another little trick. If you make the same thing every time you have company over, it's easy. You know that you're going to make pork enchiladas every single week that you have, that you're rotating through the church of people that you're inviting over, you know? And then it's easy because you make it all the time. You know, you have the same menu. <clears throat> okay, let's see here. Back to the menu plan. All right, so here, here is a one-month supper meal plan I made, and this is all like family favorites. Family favorites. It's just a, it's just a calendar of a meal plan. Family favorites, and then here's all the recipes. And then look, this is how you work with the, <laughs> work with the home management book. So. <clears throat> options for this, you know, uh, and then what did I, what's this, now? <laughs> cut the brown sugar and add a quarter cup of apple cider vinegar, okay, all right, and then why does it say, ooh, taco seasoning recipe, I don't know, I don't know why I said that, <laughs> might have been a kid that wrote that, okay, so then here, here's, and the, really some of this is just copy and paste, um, all right, and then here's an option, all right, so this is, this is the potato soup recipe, well, then here's sweet potato bisque. So apparently, uh, you know, at some point in time, I got tired of potato soup. And, um, okay, so that's one. That was a one-month plan. I kind of think I also have uh, seven slow cooker suppers somewhere. See, isn't that catchy? Seven slow cooker suppers. Okay, so, oh, here's a seven-day menu plan. There's a lunch menu plan. There's a breakfast plan. Okay, so this, I forgot to talk about this for homeschool moms. <coughs> Did I talk about last time? How you, the school lunch menu? Okay, so my kids were getting older. They were like elementary age. And, um, and I was kind of struggling with lunch. And then in our small town papers, and I was growing up, I don't know if they still do it, they, had, they would put the school lunch menu in every week. And we would always look at it and then decide what day of the week we would bring our lunch, you know, because it was like fish sticks or something, you know, mac and cheese, something gross that the school made, you know. And so the school lunch menu, they're supposed to like follow, you know, the FDA guideline or whatever it was for the year. <laughs> anyway, I think I saw the school lunch menu in the newspaper and I said, oh, yeah. I need to make a lunch plan. <laughs> I don't know how that would be, six, seven, eight, you know, the older ones at that point in time. So then I started making the school lunch plan. School lunch plan, it's the same plan every week or, you know, month, whatever it was. And it would change because 
you know, the kids would say, oh, I don't like this, and I'm tired of that, or I would get tired of something. But anyway, so I have here, and look at all that stuff written on it, too, trying to make it healthier. Because my eating did get healthier over the years, and then I'd have to, like, make adjustments. But yeah, Monday through Friday, school lunch plan. Oh, I just didn't call it school lunch plan, it's just a lunch meeting plan. Same thing for breakfast, because at some point in time, they needed, I learned, oh, they need to have a healthy breakfast. Cheerios is not healthy. So then we had, to, and I had a lot of kids, so then we had to have real breakfast, you know, for that everybody would eat. So there's a, a weekly breakfast plan here too. Which is how they learn to cook, because when they show up in the kitchen and there's this book already out there, and they're hungry, and mom is still doing her exercises or whatever, and they're like 10 years old, they're like, hey mom, I've seen you do this, can I do it? Sure, you go ahead, and they'll do it. I mean, yeah, they can be, eight-year-olds can fry eggs, you know? So, the, um, those lunch menu plans, I think, are on my website in the free resource library. Pretty sure they are, some of them are anyway. So, yeah, I learned a lot of things the hard way, and I wrote it all down. <laughs> Any other questions? I love to hang it out. I don't so know what clothes I need. Do I need like something that I'm gonna wear to get a big No. Because okay, so think about laundry is like stretching, right? When you're hanging it up and down, up and down. That's really healthy. Then plus, if you're hanging outside, that's really healthy too. But so just go, how do you get from, how do you do four loops, how do you know to dry by? Um, well, you gotta start early. Okay. So like, when you're hanging up inside in the winter, it takes like a day. Yeah. There's my book. Oh, and I brought books. This time I forgot last time. So if you want to buy a book, you can for less than it's on Amazon. Um, it's also on Kindle. Um, I have a course where all this material and more is at. And that's all. So do you have some of these pages printable on your website? Uh-huh. 
Uh -huh. um, in the free resource library, there's a whole lot of printables. Um, those, those that you have are specifically in the course, but Olivia has a copy that you can print out like the whole um, week. So it's like there's a two-page spreads for Monday morning and two-page spreads for Monday afternoon all through the week. She has that that she'll send her email. But the biggest, the biggest things are the morning and the evening routines for your personal and kitchen, mealtime routines, and afternoon chore time. Those are the big pillars of your day that will be pretty transformative if you get those going well. Yes? What if you're just really tired at night? Um, and how do you wake? Do you wake up early? You know, I I do start to get sort of. Um, I used to wake up at five, and um, really wake up at six, but I'm not really yeah. nice. So um, um, you know, I feel, yeah, I'm always at night. I'm like, okay, I'm just done. And she's like, oh, I still have to get to Oh well, no. And then I wake up and it's my thing. I've done that. So mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah, this is more. Well, um. That in um, nutrition is huge, 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 huge. What do I eat? <laughs> Are you taking magnesium? No. Okay, so get yourself some a magnesium complex. All every cell of your body needs magnesium, and if you have leg cramps, restless legs, um, foot cramps, um, magnesium will help. Constipation, magnesium. So get some, there's, you can get a, net, a complex because there's different kinds. Some of them work specifically for your brain, which is really great for the brain. And then um, natural vitality calm is the easy button because you can get it at Walgreens and Walmart and Amazon. If you take too much, you'll get diarrhea. That's, then you just back off a little bit because you need a lot. <laughs> The other one is B Supreme or B Complex. B Complex, you need a lot of B vitamins. If you've had a lot of babies, you're depleted. You're nutritionally depleted if you've had a lot of babies. So you really need to um, build up your stores again. B Complex is really huge, and that will take away the emotional roller coaster. It'll make you more, feel more. Even if your baby is five? Yep. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yep. You'll just become more even healed. <laughs> you won't be on this roller coaster anymore. Um, and a good multi. And if you're in your reproductive years, you should be on a prenatal. A quality one, not. Just get a good one. Yeah, those are, those are big ones. Um, uh, fish oil, it's huge. Um, yeah. So when you are taking care of yourself and you're getting good nutrition. Probax. Yeah, Pro Probax. Really good. It, either one cup of probiotic food every day or take one. And if you don't have one cup of probiotic food or beverage a day, then pop some probiotic capsules. But if you, if you get those things, um, if you get nutritionally cared for, you'll have more energy for everything else. And you'll, you'll just feel better. My bones used to hurt um, when I was nursing babies. And it took someone to say, oh, you need some calcium and magnesium. Oh, take calcium and magnesium. My bones don't hurt anymore. I mean, some things are just, you just don't know until someone tells you. So, and you'll, I mean, calcium and magnesium. Magnesium is in, um, it's in nuts. It's in goat cheese. It's, I'm trying to think the high foods for magnesium, vegetables. And we just don't eat enough of those things. Or even the people who think they eat a lot of vegetables in our culture really are not eating a lot of vegetables. So, those are big. Our, our diet is really crappy in the US. Really bad. <laughs> so it takes, and it takes effort. It, do, it does take a lot of effort because 
seed oils. And, and I know, I live in Iowa, we have a conventional farm. My beef is corn fed, not grass fed. And my husband works in agriculture and has for his whole career. Worked for Monsanto. And then he worked for Bayer. And you know, now he works for a chemical sales person. I, you know, I realize that I'm, there's some sort of, there's, it's just wrong, okay. But, we really do eat bad, and we're using inflammatory oils in our, in our foods, okay? So, um, olive oil, extra virgin olive oil, coconut oil, butter, grass-fed butter if you can get it. Um, you know, we really need to improve our, our foods. So, and it can be overwhelming once you start improving your foods to so just choose one thing at a time, you know? Just instead of the, you know, great value ketchup. Actually, I did it. Sometimes the store brands have less bad ingredients in it than like the commercial brands. So you, you gotta read labels, um, but avoid the food dyes. So anyway, what I was saying, next time you go buy um, butter, instead of buying whatever butter you used to buy, choose a grass-fed butter. Next, and then the next time you go buy ketchup, and, you know, just look at the label. Is there high fructose corn syrup in it? No. But does this one? Mm. Or, I mean, usually they all do, yes. So, I mean, you just choose the one that's just ketchup. Just, just tomato. Just tomato and no high fructose corn syrup. And sometimes it's good, better, best, too. You know, there's like, um, there's bad, of course, there's bad. And then there's, oh, this is, a, there's a, some of the greens are bad. And there's one less ingredients that are bad, and then this one is the best. Well, you know, you just gotta make choices. You try to make the best choices that you can. It's hard. You have to read labels. It's not very fun. <laughs> but it also becomes a habit. And then you then you start to know, okay, this is the brand that is that I've already looked at this label, I know this is a good one. Okay. So then it gets easier. But it's it's a journey for sure. I mean my journey started when my oldest daughter was allergic to cow's milk, the protein cow's milk, and this is like 1995, and six, she was, um, that was before the internet, and it was before they labeled things with food allergens, okay? So then I had to learn how to read labels, and I had to buy a book that's about, about milk allergies and about all the food derivatives, or the milk derivatives, the words for them, like all these chemistry words that came from milk. And so, then I had to read labels, and that gets tiring, so then I would just buy, okay, I'm guessing. And then plus so many foods that I was making, because I grew up, you know, my mom always made casseroles and used cream of mushroom and cream of chicken, and, you know, Velveeta. Um, <laughs> I had to switch how from cooking the way I grew up to, okay, we will have protein and vegetables and fruits. You know, it's just easier, it was just easier to cook that way. And then we didn't have to deal with all the milk that usually gets added into food. So anyway, that's where my journey started in 95. And even today, I'm still like, okay, how did we get here? Because I thought we already cut out this part of the crappy food and, and now it's kind of creeping back into life and I need to read labels and, um, you know, and try not to bring anything into my house that has seed oils in it, which are highly inflammatory. So, it's a journey. And then sometimes you don't know until you're like, hit like your 40s and you're like, okay, things are not right. I used to be able to just cut back on my eating, exercise a little bit more, go do some work, and I've dropped 10 pounds in the flash. And now, where's all this weight coming from? Oh, all the estrogenic properties in the food and in the world, and look at all the plastic in my house, you know? I mean, <laughs> you'll learn stuff, and it's not very fun. It's a dream. But yeah, you need to be healthy. If you're gonna take care of all these kids and be around to have fun with your grandkids, and you know, do all the other things you want to do in life because 
there's more life to live. And I don't want to, I personally have things to do. So I'm motivated to take care of my health and talk about it a lot. <laughs> talk about it. Yeah. Anything else? Any other questions? Yeah. I read it years ago. You have two of them? Mm. Large Family Logistics was okay, the first yeah, edition. So I did that years ago. And I want to like, put a shout out real quick to all the women that need to kind of use books and printables and everything. So I've done them all. I mean, I want to fix on people all these years. But I just want to give a little bit of hope to people. Like, when they design them, nothing ever works. So I found it was never consistent. I tried to print the printables. I tried the books. And yet, it's all off the system again. What works for you? What works for me? Less. 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 So one just word, like say less clothes, I just think more. Minimalism kind of thing. Clothes you can work. I have a hundred less. Kids are only allowed so many things. We went from a three thousand square foot home to a eleven hundred square foot home and got rid of the pieces that are longing. But mm -hmm. I don't sign up for every volunteer thing. I don't volunteer at church. I don't do those things during the season. I look at my season and go, what can I fit? Hours, that's all I can do. Like, so it's just this, like, mm -hmm. I kind of was thinking about our grandmothers. How many our grandmothers managed their lives without parents? Mm -hmm. Yeah. They did like, have fish like, towels. They, you know, they just kind of wrote notes, and then they got busy seasons, of course. Mm -hmm. You know, you had your busy seasons, and you kind of, you know, had to think that you get strategic or into the busy season. But then I think it was just less. They didn't have as so many in church activities or wonder why they shouldn't be involved. But there's so many. Every 
know, we're all different. Yeah, it, it's crazy. It's just, I think I, I do just feel like every time I go to a church function where if I can organize it, Well, thank you so much, Kim. I know I always get a whole lot of like little just tidbits, like the last time you spoke, and I really appreciate it. And I think we all do too, especially bringing the handouts. And don't forget, she has her book here for sale for thirteen dollars if you're interested. Um, and so, and if anybody didn't by chance get the handout, let us know. We've got extra copies um, of what she brought. Um, we, as you may have seen, we changed things up just a little bit instead of having snack time for moms. Since as you guys know, that kind of turned into like all the auto food for the moms and then a free for all for the kids when they came back up, you know. So so instead of having snacks for moms, what we're doing is having the um, drinks available and we could use an extra person, I think, to bring snacks for the kids because we've kind of got a big boom in, in kids coming. So so there's this sign up um, for, for snacks for kids and if you want, if you can bring drinks and that kind of thing. And so maybe just kind of double up with someone, you know, maybe both of you can bring a pan of brownies or rice because we treats or buy a bunch of Cheez-Its and yogurt, whatever, you know, it doesn't have to everything be like store-bought, um, but just kind of tag team maybe with someone on bringing snacks for kiddos um, is the plan. Um, I'm trying to think if there's anything else. Oh, just like, and keep in mind food allergies. We have a peanut and um, just nuts in general and um, soy is the only things we kind of try to watch out for with kiddos right now. And if your kid does have a allergy of some sort, please let us know so we can kind of plan accordingly um, snack wise. So, all right. Well, I'll go ahead and um, finish off here with a word of prayer and um, yeah, I'm just so glad that we were able to get together here today. So, all right, Holy Father, um, I just thank you so much for all these moms and for the moms that have gone before us in this homeschool journey that can come uh, and like Kim and just share with us what what works, what helps, what um, just can be some a guidance for us um, so that we can just homeschool our family well, but most importantly, draw them to you, Lord. I just pray that you'll be with each and every one of us throughout this week and and the rest of the month and just help help us to just have good perspective on our calling as as we help our children grow academically but more so spiritually and that they may, may be drawn to you and that you may soften the hearts of our children and um, just help them to see you and love you and um, know how good you are and thank you so much for all that you do for us and how you provide each day in your holy name we pray amen um, and oh, I will also want to mention next. Our next meeting will be September 29th. So we technically have two this month, but we aren't meeting in October. So that's so that's the reason for that. So very end of the month, we'll have Laura Kuntz. We'll be talking about homeschooling and serving and in, in service. So I'm looking forward to that. So all right, hope you guys have a great rest of your day.